Guys, uh, this is the lovely Christina Milizia. Uh, Christina is so freaking talented. She's one of the first voice actresses I met when I moved to LA because it was the first, one of the first bookings I did was Victor and Valentino and she was the kindest soul. And we went and had a little coffee afterwards and Christina was acting. I mean, she is just so humble with all the work she does and she looks like she's uh, 15. <laughs> so uh, Christina has done a ton of stuff, including Poison Ivy and DC Superheroes, Jessica Cruz in Lego DC Superheroes, Annie and Amumu, is that how Amumu. it sounds? Amumu. Amumu yeah. from League of Legends. I know we got like some this. League fans. How does she sound? Um, Amumu is like really sad about everything and um, he like just really wants friends. Um, oh. So like, but he's like really, he's kind of, um, he just can never make any friends. And so he's always like, can I give you a hug? Let oh me give God. you a hug. It's like, oh but he's like creepy. So yes. You also do Baby Carlitos in Casa Grandes, which we have to talk about. Charlene and Victor and Valentino uh, and Teresa and Barbie Dreamhouse. Adventures among a bunch of other things because you also work on uh freaking monster what's that called monster teen Mo monster monster high that was a while ago but yeah we did monster high um yeah I just I do a lot of a little of everything actually the most recent thing which is actually really exciting for me which is um I've been voicing Hello Kitty in a newer show and like that's oh like God. for all the girly nerds like oh, wait actual like, Hello Kitty yeah I'm Hello Kitty in this little San Rio series. What does that sound like? <laughs> oh, she actually doesn't speak really, so it's more like little, just like it's like just little, <laughs> like I just do little like effort. Oh my god! Oh my god! You started your voice acting career when you were eight. I was. I was. I was very small. Um, how, how did this go down? It was an accident. Um, so my parents are both performers, and my mother. Uh, my, but they're actually both singers, uh, all different types of things. But my mother um, actually got an agent because she wanted to do some voiceover work because she was trying to make some extra money on the side from her singing career. And so um, I was just basically accompanying her on her auditions. Uh, so I was just sitting waiting in the waiting room at one of them. And they came out and they were like, well, actually, we're looking for a kid for this role. Does your daughter want to try? They saw me sitting there. And my mom's like, do you want to try? And I was like, sure. And so I went in and I, I booked the job. And it was like this like $3,000 job and it turned out like it, the casting director was name was Ned Lott. I don't know if you know who that is, but oh. um, he did Disney character voices. Uh, he does all the casting for Miyazaki. Like he's like this huge casting director. At the time he was wow. working for a different company. This was before he did all that. But um, so, you know, they, I just, I did that thing and they kept calling me in. And then there was a couple of other things where my parent, my mom was recording some albums in recording studios and she did a bunch of kids albums so she'd bring in all these little kids to like do little choruses of like you know I can't even remember, think of the kids songs but so I'd go in too and like we'd do these little kids choruses and I guess some of the recording engineers would notice me for whatever reason and they'd be like hey we want to bring her in for some other stuff and so I just got called like I never really auditioned for anything and so learning how to audition later in life was really interesting because I just was so ah! spoiled I was totally spoiled yeah because I was just yeah. like they just call me right like it's just ridiculous um but no so I would just got called all growing up and and this was before the internet you know really was a thing and so um I was just kind of a it's harder to get kid talent and since my parents were performers I had grown up basically and they were very poor so like they were just like had me at all their gigs like there was no babysitters really and they were like here kid just hold this maraca you know why don't you dance a little you'll be part of the show um <laughs> your mom your your dad's proving your mom's mexican my mom grew up in mexico she's actually uh, like she calls herself the gringa chilanga she's a white girl who grew up in mexico um like me <laughs> i like so, girl who grew up in columbia but yeah right so she speaks perfect you know perfect spanish she's perfectly bilingual um yeah. but yeah she grew up there and she could not be more mexican honestly like she's mm -hmm. like just mexican through and through she sings mariachi all kinds of things um yeah uh but yeah so but she is and that's why i'm lighter skinned is because of of her and my dad yes was born and raised in peru um, so then wow. so then you finish high school and what happens at this point you're, you're recording a ton like what when did you say oh i could do this full time as a job how do I do this right so what I did I mean yeah I did all growing up and then when I went to college I went to college across the country in the east on the east coast and all of a sudden all of my little my little voiceover clients I didn't have any and so um where'd you go to college uh Boston University BU have we talked about this no I went to BC you did 
Whoa, yeah. Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I had no way to make money and I was trying to help, you know, pay for, you know, just basic living expenses. And yeah. I was working at like Jamba Juice because it was like one of the only jobs I could get Okay. for like seven bucks an hour. And I was like, you know, and I was used to getting paid a lot more. And now let me be clear, everyone, voice actors don't make a lot of money. People like think we make, we make a very high hourly rate, but uh, we might not work very often. And so people are like, oh my God, you make so much an hour. And it's like, yeah, but that's not eight hours a day, you know, like, and so anyway, I just want to once clarify. every once in a while. Exactly. Um, so I decided to go back home to California. I uh, went to UC Berkeley instead, and I worked for a recording studio. Um, and uh, so I got a job there and that was honestly the best education I could have ever asked for. Wow. Yeah. Um, I got to do, I was an in-house voice actor for them. So that was like, and it was really hard to leave. I was like a salaried voice actor for them, which was incredible. They paid me a flat weekly fee to voice as much as they wanted me to voice. Uh -huh. Um, and so it was good for them because I got cheap voiceover and then I got like a regular salary and a 401k, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And when I wasn't voicing, I did their talent casting and like, you know, other just kind of admin stuff. And so, That's amazing. Cause that teaches you so much too, about listening to other people's auditions, demos. It did. It was seriously, again, it was like the best education ever. So I did um, their voice talent direction stuff. I booked all the sessions. I did some directing. I learned how to edit and it was just phenomenal. So I was there for six years and it was just a great job. I loved it. <laughs> so you did, you did a, a moomoo. How does Annie sound just when she talks? Oh, um, I'm trying to think. She's very spunky. Um, I'm trying to think one of her lines. Um, eeny, meeny, miny, burn. Yeah. Um, trying to think of you smell like burning. So she is a pyromaniac. Um, and she's very excited about setting things on fire. And she's like, uh, today, what's your favorite aminal? A bear? Aminal. She, yes, aminal. People ask me all the time, isn't it animal? Or are you saying aminal on purpose? I'm saying aminal. Have you seen my bear Tibbers? Does she oh, say yeah. that? Have you seen my bear Tibbers? I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, she has a bear that gets really big and eats everybody. I was one of the original characters. It was so yeah. old. And and I didn't know what the game was because I was one of the first. And so I was... Of course. My husband on our first date told me what League of Legends was. I didn't know that he was like, you're famous. And I was like, whatever. I thought he was just blowing smoke, you know? Um, okay, I'm wait, how did, we, how did we meet this husband and go on a first date? Was it through people? Because it be, I'm curious if he knew that you were a voice actor and then he connected it or like, how did this come out? We, so we did online dating. Thanks, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so okay, we, cool. we told, it was online dating. So we both knew, a, a, you know- A little bit. About a, a bit about each other from our profiles. And, okay. Um, uh, and I'm so grateful to online dating because we would have never met in person yeah, uh, yeah. because of just the, our nature of our job. So it just wouldn't, wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I knew he worked for Riot, but I laughed and he said, your laugh sounds really familiar. Have you ever done anything for Riot? And I was like, I don't know. I was like, let me look it up. And I was like, but I, and I had written down that I had done things, something for Riot Games, but it, the game didn't even have a name when I did it. So I was like, right. I'm some character named Annie, uh, Nunu, and Amumu. Um, and I think I pronounced it wrong. And he was like, you're Annie? Like he ah! totally flipped out. And I was like, and his whole face lit up. And he was like trying to show me like on his phone, the scale of how big League of Legends was. Cause I had done up until that point. I mean, I came here to do animation, but my whole previous career in uh, NorCal was games, toys, and occasionally video games. But um, my primary area of voiceover was toys, actually. Toys. Yeah, and that's, for those of you who are Annie fans, um, that's a very, you know, the, let's play. Can you find the color blue? <gasps> let's, it's very, like, that's a very toy thing. And the thing is, the, I think the reason why it translates well to psychotic voices is because you can <laughs> always, no, and it's true because it's very sunshiny, but it has to be sunshiny even when it's something bad. So, and that's the thing with toys. So it has to be like, oh, oops, mom got sunburned. Can you help her? So it's very like, you know, this terrible thing happened. Try again. And so it comes off really creepy and psychotic. But like, if you have to do toy work, that's how it works. Is like, everything has to be encouraging to the child. But in a different context, that can become very weird. Like, yeah, really well, that's bizarre. how you got Charlene. So yeah. smartly.
Yeah. And so Charlene is like really excited about really <laughs> dark things, but it's really, you know, it's so the cuteness and just, so I think that whole training with the toy world of like having to be, make everything sunshiny, even when yeah. it wasn't. And most of my, my work has considered now I'm booking in other realms, but most of it has been in these high pitched cute voices. And so that was Lala the koala and Lala is, um, she has a wisp. And she's a very small baby toy. And this was my first animation booking. And she oh was God. one of the baby's baby toys. Psychotic children specialist. Yes, meow, yes. indeed. Yes. <laughs> um, I, th I think I've always, there's always been like this. And I think that also comes in with like Poison Ivy and stuff too. I, I tend to voice cute characters and mm -hmm. then villains. Ooh. And so when I get a villain child, that's like my jam. jam. I get very excited. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I tend to, you know, just voice spastic, energetic characters, very cute characters, young characters, and then villains. And yeah. so, um, and what's your poison ivy sound like? Um, poison ivy is interesting. So she actually has two different kind of sounds on the show. Um, you know, I mean, uh, so she'll have her like her poison ivy one, which is much, you know, more uh, uh, sensuous. And, and we don't, we don't, because it's a teen, it's a teen show, so mm -hmm. we don't go too far in that you know we didn't go too far with that because again it's it's she's like a younger version of it mm -hmm. um so what they wanted for poison ivy whatever the casting thing said is they wanted a mixture of cersei lannister and ali sheedy okay they wanted ali sheedy for when she's in her persona that's just her teen persona like mm -hmm. reject like the girl in the corner who's like <laughs> kind of awkward and strange and like yeah. oh I did I watched a lot of Ali Sheedy and it's just like very imbalanced everything's kind of gritted teeth and just like yeah and then she's like totally weird all of a sudden so that's oh, kind wow. of so uh just really like not socially adept so that's yeah. kind of how she sounds but then when she's in poison ivy mode it'll be like oh how curious for a moment there I thought for sure you were Batman and she's much more like um you know, nothing green will ever grow there again. She's much more angry. Yeah, There's much yeah. more. So when they really wanted, and the reason why they told me, um, they told me I was one of the only people that really gave them a distinction between the two voices, um, that they really yeah. wanted it to be separate and different. Yeah. So, you know, Poison Ivy is much more in command and she's much more controlled. Talk to me about our baby Carlitos. And yeah, I mean, you just, you just make noises. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing a lot of this lately, and it's like my favorite lately. work. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of like <laughs> gibberish stuff. Obviously, I, I can't talk about what I'm working on, but like, yeah. um, just babbly, you know, just nonverbal stuff. So, um, so originally, I did all these little characters that were like this, and so it wasn't like a big stretch to get into the baby stuff. I just kept getting younger and younger. And so eventually I went, how did I do? So holy cow. So that's what I do is wow. I make weird noises. So. I love it. So do you do you talk to your baby like this sometimes? Or you're like, nah, that's weird. I don't, um, only because it's vocally very tiring. Um, yeah. and I have to like do a really long warm up <laughs> before I can get into it. Um, but I imitate him a lot because he's, yeah, very he teaches you. He does. He teaches me all the time. So I use baby Carlitos has a lot of my son in there. So like he got, he would say gag a lot. So there's a lot of gag, 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 and ba, ba, ba. And those are common, like baby. I've spent hours and hours just listening to baby babble. There's certain yeah. syllables they'll use, um, they spit a lot more than you would think. So just like, <laughs> like yeah, they do like very slobbery. Yeah. So I try to throw a lot of that in. Um, their laughs are very particular. Talk to me about Jessica Cruz. She, um, she I was gonna, I was confusing both because when you were talking about Poison Ivy and her two sides, I was like, right, because she, she has anxiety issues. And I was like, no, it's Jessica, right? Who has um, social anxiety. So Jessica was, um, that was again such an oh it's gonna up my gain a little bit here. That was such an unexpected booking, and I was so excited about it. And I got to do a bunch of stuff for her. Um, and uh, I think Jessica again because of I've had a lot of difficult things in my life. One of the issues that I actually have dealt with a lot is anxiety. Um, I definitely mm. um you know for and it's hard. It's like I don't want to talk about it a lot. Like it's very personal. Um, but you know again there's 
I also realized that, the, I mean, Jesse Cruz's following is, is massive with people who have anxiety because they feel like they finally have a hero. Yeah, and, um, absolutely. And, and also that, you know, you can have anxiety and still do good things in the world and contribute and, and um, be um, valuable. And it's okay to have anxiety. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. You just need to learn how to cope with it for yourself. Right. And that it doesn't mean that you're not capable of doing things that take tremendous courage. And so I just think she's an incredibly complex and deep, wonderful character. And, um, and I do actually uh, suffer from anxiety. Um, and so I think that that role was just very, uh, very me, honestly, yeah, uh, just personal. being me. So, um, you know, uh, I definitely voice like more of the younger versions of her. There's been someone else who's voiced her for like some more older serious roles. And my nature, the nature of my voice is a little lighter. Um, but yeah, I, I still had the honor of being her very first voice actor and getting to voice her probably more than. And she's actors. Hispanic. Yes, she is. Guys, thank you for watching, Christina. I know you've been really busy. You have you've had some crazy life changes happen in the last year. Uh, thank you for coming on and making time for us. I know a lot of people have been very excited. Um, so I really appreciate you making the time. Thank you for the honor of being here. Honestly, you know, I am such a nerd for Sombra and I think you're a tremendous voice actor. And honestly, it's, it's just, it's an honor to, to get to hang with you and, um, and just, I'm glad to see your face because, you know, I've missed seeing everyone. So thank you everyone for, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. And guys keep booming and booping.